Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to the Unconventional Homestead. Tonight, I'm making dinner that'll be delivered to our peeps, eight people that we deliver to every single week. Okay, this isn't a fancy meal, but I guarantee it's gonna be one of their favorites. Pigs in a blanket, has a slice of cheese in it, Swiss cheese to be exact, and the crescent rolls I found are actually Hawaiian. So it's gonna be kind of a little fancy pig in a blanket. I've done pigs in a blanket before and it went over really well. And then the side that I'm making is a roasted root vegetable. We're gonna start by making chickpeas and I'm gonna make them in the Instant Pot. I'm gonna make a pound. I actually, your Instant Pot can make up to two pounds of dried beans. I'm gonna make a pound, but I will have some extra that I'll be able to freeze for the next time I make a side salad with chickpeas, so I only have to make it once. I'm using some of my homemade chicken bone broth, and I will start that in just a minute. But the recipe is awesome. It has Brussels sprouts, dried cranberries, sweet potatoes. So I have one of Anthony's sweet potatoes. It's about as big as my head. And a little bit of onion. And just a simple um, avocado oil, or you could make it olive oil, with a little maple syrup and vinegar dressing and orzo pasta. It's excellent. I've made it one other time for a dinner party and it went over really well. So I'm thinking this will be easy, but yet something different for them to have. So let's get started on the uh, chickpeas. So, I have my second Instant Pot because in my first one, I am making, I'm doing hard boiled eggs for, for us. So in the Instant Pot, I've already, this is one pound of chickpeas. I've rinsed them, gone through them, and I actually found a few that were bad. I have found a rock before in beans. I always thought people were a little crazy for saying that, but um, yeah, it, uh, it is. So, um, I canned these this year, um, but I do save my lids as long as there's nothing wrong with them. I have a, a different place where I put lids that have been used for canning once. Those are the lids I go to if I have, I have some non-canning jars that fit a canning jar lid. That's where I go or if I'm going to vacuum seal something. But also, just to let you know, remember in 2020, we couldn't find lids. So I'm going to keep those in case we ever have a problem. Anything that's dented or stained, I throw away. But I keep anything that in the event of an emergency, I would try to use them again. But I don't plan on ever having to do that. So into the Instant Pot for one pound of beans, you are adding two quarts of liquid. I'm using the bone broth because I'm not one, uh, I don't eat beans myself very often, but I always think if you add a little flavor, um, I'm just adding one more layer of flavor for this salad. I think it'll be really good. So chickpeas are in the Instant Pot for 30 minutes, then you let natural release so this is going to give me time, and excuse me for, this This is, like I said, is my backup, is, there we go. Um, <clears throat> and so, making beans in an Instapot is really easy. And it's the way that I've started doing it now. I have a three bean salad that I make. Um, and it actually can be canned. And so if you would like to see that in a video, let me know down in the comments below. Um, but I make a lot of beans in the Instant Pot, um, and it's what I use. So I will to the bottom of, in the description, uh, attach the reference that I always use for making Instant Pot beans. I don't get fancy anymore. I don't add a bay leaf or salt or vinegar. I just add the liquid and the beans. I stir it up and then I set it. So I'm going to get it going 
and I'm gonna start chopping my vegetables. You don't need to watch that. But once I have them chopped, I bet the beans will be done and I'll show you what we're doing. So I'm getting ready to do the orzo. It's one cup of orzo. What was nice is this pack that I found had two cups in it. So I made one and boom, that's what I like. Also, I forgot to tell you that it, it has uh, cranberry, dried cranberries, craisins in it. I did the last time, I found them at Dollar Tree. It was perfect. These were more expensive, probably end up being just a little bit more than the Dollar Tree. I'll have two more batches in here. So I'm gonna save these, put them in a Ziploc too, because I don't use craisins that often, but it's nice to have them on hand for when a recipe calls for them. Um, so it uh, says to follow the directions on the bag. So I'm just gonna boil the water to put the orzo in and um, then I'm gonna start chopping up the vegetables. I've cleaned the Brussels sprouts. I've started cleaning the sweet potato. I have to show you this. Anthony grew this sweet potato. So I'm gonna use this. It's, um, I'm not sure what the type of sweet potato is, um, but I'm gonna get it, I've been soaking, it was really dirty, but that's the best way to store it, is with the dirt on it. So we've, we've cleaned it up, I'm gonna peel it and uh, cut off a few places where um, he cut this with his shovel, but that's okay. And smells good, smells like a sweet potato. So anyway, so we're gonna use this and uh, I'm gonna cut up the Brussels sprouts too. So then I'll show you when they go into the oven and cause we're gonna roast them. And it's just amazing, it smells good already. So in cutting up the vegetables, Brussels sprouts, I've washed them. I cut the end off of them. And then I trim or tear off a few of the outer leaves. It's just like cabbage, in fact, they're they look like mini cabbages. And then for this particular recipe, I do cut them in half. And uh, so it's a little tedious, but I guarantee you they look so much better. And if it's a really big one, I'll, I'll even cut that in half. And I just, it gives me an opportunity to look at it one more time and make sure that I have all the not so pretty stuff. The last thing you wanna do is introduce somebody to a new vegetable and it not look appetizing and a little sketchy, I guess. So I already have the onions cut up. I have the uh, one sweet potato that was like two. And um, I crushed, or well, yeah, crushed up some pecans, two thirds of a cup for the recipe. And we actually roast these as well. The recipe calls for walnuts, but I think pecans will work. I don't have walnuts right now. Um, so we're getting there and getting everything ready. Here's the orzo pasta. I went and put like a half a tablespoon of oil in it so that it didn't clump together as it was chilling. So I just have it hanging out over here um, and it's done and, and ready for everything else to be added to it. I have all of the veggies cut up the Brussels sprouts, the sweet potatoes, the onions. And I wanted to show you, this is a half size baking sheet. I left this area to remind me that I need to put the pecans here the last five to 10 minutes they're roasting. I'm gonna put them in a preheated 425 degree oven for 20 minutes. I'm gonna take them out at 10 and stir them. There's also just a drizzle of olive oil and salt on these, so I've kind of already um, stirred them up a little bit. So we're well on our way to having some um, roasted root vegetable salad. Pulling out the veggies after 10 minutes, and I'm going to stir them. I can tell they're not even close. I do remember for the last time I made this, it took longer for the veggies. Um, to roast. They look good though. They smell really good. And we will put them back in for another 10 minutes and then I'll put the pecans on. Here 
here are the veggies after uh, 20 minutes in the oven at 425. You can see there's some, um, well, that's, here we go. Maybe there's some browning on it. Um, some color, the, the potatoes are definitely getting soft to the touch. So I've, I've poured the pecans over here and uh, we're going to go just for five more minutes. I don't want anything to burn or get too mushy. We want them to hold up in that salad. While we're waiting for the veggies to finish, we're going to put the dressing together. So it's a fourth of a cup of, it says olive oil, but I'm going to definitely use avocado. The first time I made this, I thought for sure that there wasn't going to be enough dressing, but there definitely was. You need a tablespoon of maple uh, syrup. So I'm going to spray uh, my tablespoon with some avocado spray because I definitely want to make sure every bit of this gets in there. And look at that, it all came out. So that's beautiful. And then a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. I don't use red wine vinegar very much. But I do think for this recipe, it definitely uh, is what's needed. Um, then, <laughs> the spices, it is so minuscule. A fourth of a teaspoon of basil and a fourth of a teaspoon of oregano. Now, last time I made it, I didn't have oregano. I was out, and so I used Italian and it worked really well, so no issues. And then a um, little bit of pepper. So just a few shakes, you don't want too much. And then I do want to add a little bit of garlic. And I think I'm just going to add dried garlic. Um, this is the problem that I have. So as I was saying, this is the problem I have with having a basement um, kitchen and upstairs is that I have stuff in both spots. Also, a quarter cup, or excuse me, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Um, and remember, that's going to be enough because we did salt the ro vegetables as they were roasting. And then it does say that we can add some fresh parsley. I don't have any, so I'm just going to add a little bit of parsley to the dressing, get it a little wet. And then I'll mix this up. And let's just, mm, smells fresh and it really does smell like fall. Okay. So I will bring you back when I pull those vegetables out and we put it with the orzo and we put the dressing on it. You are able to serve this warm or cold. I only have served it cold and it'll be cold when I deliver it to our peeps this weekend. But um, you, could, you could have it warm. I'll tell you what, those pecans smell amazing. And I definitely prefer pecans over walnuts. And I will make that note in the recipe. Um, because, boy, it smells really, really good. 
I like how the potatoes are staying together, but yet I can tell that they're they're soft. So I'm gonna get the orzo. And see, by putting that little bit of oil in there, it's not clumping. You, you know, you don't have a lot of pasta. So you, you definitely don't want to lose it clumping it together. Now, I don't want all these craisins in the same spot either. I think what's nice is you get this salad, all of these items in one bite. You know, if you get the onion with the Brussels sprout and the sweet potato and a craisin with a little bit of the dressing and then the, the orso. It was interesting when I took this to the dinner party. We used to be in a game night was four other or three other couples or four couples total and we rotated who had hosted and we all bring a side the hostess brings the main dish and one of one of the guys had never had brussels sprouts before and he's somewhat i mean he has traveled some i mean it's not like he's only been in our little town but it was so cute him asking me like what were those because they were so good and I said, oh, I'm not going to say his name, but I said, oh, you know what? You need to have Brussels sprouts cooked in bacon. And he just looked at me like, oh, yeah, I need to try that because he loved them this way. I'm like, yeah, these are good. But if you haven't had Brussels sprouts before, bacon and uh, just bacon, bacon and onions uh, with Brussels sprouts and uh it just makes it a whole new level of goodness. I don't use tin foil a lot in cooking, but when I'm roasting vegetables, I think last time I used parchment paper, it worked really well too. Um, but those pecans, I'm gonna have to say that's a better choice than walnuts. I suppose if you like walnuts better, you're gonna think differently. Um, and let, I had a red onion last time that I used. I just think the, the, you know, the, the purpleness of a red onion really plays off. So I'm going to one more time. This, I have had <laughs> this probably 20 plus years and it's from Pampered Chef and it has recipes of dressings around the side but it has the measurements and that little <clears throat> um, whisk on it and it really is useful for mixing up stuff like this. The rest of the craisins, oh, I think I'll do one more time. Then what I'll do is I'll let this cool while I'm making the pigs in a blanket. And then I'll package it up into the individuals. And I have labels to um, put on them, but I don't wanna put the lids on them when they're hot. So. We don't need condensation. Anyway, it's pretty, you can always add more craisins if you want. I just. I don't know what people like, so I just usually leave it to the amount they, the recipe says. So beautiful and a great salad um, that you can take and it, it kind of dresses anything up. I thought this would be really good with pulled pork. Um, you know, just kind of something nice for a fall dinner. So the pigs in a blanket are really economical. Don't remember exactly, but our grocery store has been running daily specials, like come in and grab these deals while supplies last. So when you're working and you have to go after work, sometimes I've missed a few of them. Sometimes I'm not driving by the store, I need to go somewhere else. But if I am and there's something that I can use, I stop and pick it up. So they had these eight pack of hot dogs 
for, it was under a dollar. I think it was 88 cents. Then I found these sweet Hawaiian crescent rolls. I think it's kind of, it might be a little bit gourmet. Um, and they were like a dollar fifty. And crescent rolls are not cheap. And then, like a week later, they had a pack of processed cheese, which I haven't bought in like a really long time. But it was less than a dollar for sixteen slices, and Swiss was included in the sale. So I am taking the crescent rolls out. I've already made two over here. I'm trying to make sure that the cheese doesn't overhang the crescent roll. Um, and then I'm just taking a hot dog and you start at the big end and you just roll it up. And I should be able to fit 16 on each pan. I have enough for 32. Um, and I will actually have eight pieces of cheese left over. Um, because I'm only using, I think I'll be pushing it to use more than a half a slice in there. And sometimes you have to pat them down a little bit. Um, you do want to follow the recipe on the back of the crescent rolls. So ours said 375, but if it's a darker pan, and since I have this blue around, I'm going with 350 for 9 to 12 minutes. And so I will try 9 minutes first because I'm really most concerned about the crescent roll. The hot dog will cook in that amount of time. And then my people have to reheat them. Most of them will just heat it in a microwave, so um, it won't be bad. But I'll bring you back when I have them all done and ready to put in the oven. I almost forgot I was draining the chickpeas and we need to add a cup and a half. I read on um, Google that a cup and a half of cooked garbanzo or um, chickpeas is the equivalent of one can, which is what the recipe calls for. They turned out nice and they look really good in this salad. So I'm gonna let this continue to cool. I have one pan of pigs in a blanket in the oven and I had remembered the last time I did these, probably a year ago, the pigs in the blanket. It was about, I why I remember this was 18 minutes in the oven. And But reading the back of the Hawaiian crescent roll said nine to 13 minutes. But guess what? We're in there for um, just two more minutes and that'll be a total of 18. And I think that'll be it. When I turn them over, there was no color yet on the bottom. And that's how I knew. So it might be affected by the hot dog in there. I will say so far, the cheese has not oozed out, which was one of my concerns. I think it's just gonna melt into the roll and it's just gonna add one more layer of flavor. Um, so we are almost done. I'll bring you back to show you the finished pigs in a blanket. And that's what we have for tonight. So this is the first pan. I've put the other two in, but I wanted to show you. There is finely color on the bottom. Um, there's a little bit of cheese that I'm seeing here, but it didn't run or anything like that. So those are good. And don't be afraid to try to come up with a creative way to use the sale items at your grocery store to be able to make a meal and add something extra to it the little bit of cheese, those type of things. So, um, oh, well, the other thing, I had said I would have leftover Swiss cheese. I do not. I had a 16 piece package and I have 32 hot dogs. So it worked out perfectly. I don't have anything left over but some garbanzo beans that I'm letting cool here. And then I'm going to package them up in one and a half cup servings and put them in the freezer for the next time I'm making that salad. Then I don't, have to um, get out the Instapot and do that. So, so I wanted to show you, I got um, three bags of garbanzo beans. I got online and found that um, 
a can, a 15.5 ounce can is equivalent to 1.5 cups. So I added 1.5 cups to my salad just a minute ago before I packaged it up. And then I divvied these up and guess what? One pound of dried garbanzo beans makes six cups um, of beans. So I have three more recipes here. Um, a can at Walmart of beans is 78 cents and it was $1.28 for four. So I did save some money. I used bone broth, but they probably taste better. I don't have to have all those cans. Um, and I know, and then I'm using Ziploc. So you kind of have to weigh it out yourself and figure out what is easiest for you. But it's nice to know that you can get these made up ahead of time and have them ready for your recipes. What a fun evening of making food for our food deliveries. The salad turned out wonderful. It looks great in these little containers. Just really fallish. The pigs in a blanket wrap up well. I have the rest to get ready, but I really want to thank you for spending a little bit of time at the unconventional homestead. I hope you'll comment below. Have you ever eaten Brussels sprouts? Have you ever made pigs in a blanket? Maybe what you're doing with the food sales from your grocery store. We'd love to hear from you. We'd also love if you'd share this video with friends and family who might enjoy it, as well as subscribe so you get notification of all of our other videos coming out. Thank you again. Until our next video, make sure you're preserving your food.